Good afternoon, everybody. This week, we have been learning all about time, and we've learned to tell time to the hour and to the half hour. So I wanted to do a lesson together so we could talk about some of those things we've learned and discuss some strategies that I like to use when I'm trying to tell time when it might be a little bit trickier, especially if you look down here, maybe if you have some analog clocks that look like this where it might not be as easy to tell the time. But we'll talk about some tricks, we'll review some of the things that we've learned, and we'll work through this worksheet together. The first set of directions says, circle the correct clock. Write the times for the other two clocks on the lines. Number one, circle the clock that shows half past one o'clock. So I'm actually going to highlight, those are important words, half past one o'clock. If you don't have a highlighter, that's okay. You can underline it or circle it. It's just one of those keywords, kind of like in a word problem. We want to make sure we pay attention to those important words. So half past means it's halfway around the clock. It's halfway past that hour. And I know that halfway around the clock is going to be at six because if I look at my minutes, I know the minutes start up here at zero and then they go by fives all the way around the clock. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Well, 30 is half past the hour, and it's halfway around the clock. Because if we keep going, I see that my minutes go all the way back to the top, I would get to 60. Well, 30 is half of 60. So half past is halfway around the clock and it would be at the 30. So I know my minute hand has to be pointing to the 30. Well, this minute hand is not. Remember the minute hand is the longer one. The minute hand on that one is pointing to the 12, which is zero, zero or o'clock. So I know automatically that one cannot be my clock. So I can go ahead and exit out. So it's gotta be either B or C. Now, this can be kind of tricky. Hmm, I'm looking for one o'clock, half past one o'clock. Well, I see one right here and the hour hand is still pretty close to both of those. So how do I tell which is which? Well, if I follow my hour hand all the way through, I see that this hour hand is in between one and two it's actually halfway between one and two. This hour hand is between 12 and one. It's halfway between the 12 and the one. It hasn't made it to the one yet. So this one actually hasn't made it to one o'clock yet. So there's no way it could be half past one. This one is actually half past 12. So it can't be that one either. So this must be my correct clock. Now, if I look at this clock, I see my hour hand is on one, my minute hand is on 00, so the time for that clock is what? That's right, one o'clock. Now I can write that in digital form, one dot dot zero zero, or you could write it in word form. one o'clock. Okay, and then this one we talked about as well, it's half past 12, so I could write that digitally as 1230 or half past 12. Let's do the same thing for two. Circle the clock that shows seven o'clock. So I'm going to highlight my important words. Well, we know o'clock is the beginning of the hour. It's when the minute hand is at zero, zero. So it's got to be pointing to that 12 at zero, zero. Well, all three of them are. So now we have to look at our hour hand. Our hour hand should be pointing to the seven. So the shorter hand needs to be on the seven. That one is, that one is not, and neither is that one. 
So we know that A is our correct clock. The time for this one is what? That's right, eight o'clock. So I can write it in digital form or eight o'clock. What is the time for this clock? That's right, six o'clock. So I can write digital form or word form. Either way would work. Number three, circle the clock that shows half past 10 o'clock. So again, I see those important words, half past. So I know my minute hand has to be pointing where? That's right. The minute hand has to be on the six because that is 30 or half past. Well, this one's automatically out because he's pointing to the 12. So it's between these two. Do you think it's A or C? That's right, it is C. Because again, if I follow my hour hand out on both of these, I see that this one is halfway past 10, but it hasn't made it to 11 yet. This one is half past 11, so this one's 11.30, half past 11 o'clock. So we can go ahead and write 11.30 or half past 11. And this one is what time? That's right, 11 o'clock. Because the minute hand is on the 12, which is o o o'clock and then the hour hand is on 11. So you can write the digital form or of course you can write the word form. Either one's correct. Now these ones at the bottom are a little bit trickier but if you look carefully and think about what you know about an analog clock you can do it. So this first one has a couple numbers on it the second one has no numbers, but it does have little lines. Those are called tick marks, and those are where numbers should be. So that kind of helps us a little bit. And then this last one doesn't give us any help. No numbers, no tick lines. So it says, what time is it? Write the time on the lines. So we have to really look at these clocks carefully. Okay, so on this one, I have 12 three, six, and nine. So it gives me a couple hours, but it doesn't give me the ones in between. So I could go ahead and I could write the numbers in between. Now, when you do it, just make sure you space them out evenly because all the numbers, if you look at these, of course are spaced out evenly. So if we look at that clock, what time does that clock say? That's right, two o'clock because my long minute hand is on 12, which is zero, zero, and my short hour hand is on two, two o'clock. Now this one has all of the marks, but no numbers. So we can go ahead and number it. We know that the number at the top is always going to be 12, and then it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, and 11. So now that we have our numbers, what time does this clock say? That's right, 4.30. I know that because my longer minute hand is pointing to the six. Remember that six is 30 or half past. And if I carefully follow my hour hand down, it's halfway past the four, but it has not made it to five yet, so it can't be 5.30. So it's 4.30. And we know they want us to write digital because it has the two dots, like a digital clock. Underneath it, underneath it if you wanted to write the word form, you could do half past four or two o'clock if you wanted to. Now this last one is tricky. 
and I'm going to show you a trick that I like to use to make sure I have all my numbers right on my clock. Now we learned that a clock can kind of be looked at like fractions, right? So if we divide our clock in half, we know that at the top up here we have 12 and at the bottom we have 6 because that's the top of the hour, 00, and half past is 30 or 6. Now, if we divide it this way, we can make it into what fractions? That's right, quarters or fourths. And we know on this side is 3, and on this side is 9. Now that one now looks kind of like the one that they gave us to begin with. Now it's a lot easier to fill our numbers in. So I can go ahead and put one, two, four, five, seven, eight, ten, eleven. Just make sure your numbers are spaced evenly. You don't have some squished together and some other ones really far apart because then you won't be able to tell the correct time. So my long minute hand's pointing at the twelve. So what does that mean, o'clock or 30? That's right, o'clock. And then where's my hour hand pointing? That's right, he's pointing to the 10. So that clock shows 10 o'clock. Now on this one, they give us the digital time. We have to draw the hour and minute hands on the clocks. So I want you to pause the video and I want you to go ahead and draw your hour hands and minute hands on the clock. And then I want you to unpause it and I want you to watch me do it and make sure that you did it the correct way. Check your answers on my clocks and make sure that you did it the correct way. All right, so now that you've put your hour and minute hands on, I'm going to go ahead and do mine and explain why I'm putting them in the places that I am and see if yours are in the correct place too. This clock says one o'clock. So I know my minute hand has to be pointing to the 12 for o'clock and my hour hand has to be pointing to the one. Notice, I made my minute hand significantly longer than my hour hand. I do that because if I make those hands the same length, I can't tell which one is the hour and which one is the minute, and that makes it really hard. So I always make sure I keep my hour hand really short and my minute hand really long so I can tell it's one o'clock. This clock says 1.30. So I know my minute hand has to be pointing down at the six because that's where the 30 minute mark is. Now watch my hour hand carefully. I'm going to point it in between one and two. Now remember, it can't be exactly on the one because that would be exactly one o'clock. But it can't be on the two yet either because it hasn't reached two o'clock. It's only halfway around. So it has to be halfway in between my one and two. Two o'clock, again, pointing at zero, zero. And my little minute hour, I'm sorry, my little hour hand is pointing to two. 6.30, long minute hands on this, the six down here for 30. And then my hour hand has to be between six and seven because it's half past six, but it hasn't made it to seven o'clock yet. If I follow it all the way down, I can check and make sure it's halfway between. 7.30, my minute hand's on the six for 30. And then my hour hand's going to be halfway between seven and eight. It's halfway past seven o'clock, but it hasn't made it to eight yet. 8.30, we have a lot of 30s. They want us to practice those half past. My minute hand's on the six for 30. My hour hand is half past the eight, but it hasn't made it to nine o'clock yet. 10 o'clock, that one's going to be pointing my minute hand at the 12 for zero, zero o'clock. 
and then my hour hand, the short hand is pointing to the 10. 11 o'clock, again, pointing up top. And my short hour hand is going to be pointing to the 11. Ooh, 12 o'clock, I like this one, and I'll tell you why. So I see o'clock, so I know my minute hand, the long one, is going to be on the 12, zero, zero. But where does my hour hand also have to be? That's right. My hour hand also has to be on 12 because my hour is 12. So I will show you how I show that. I always do it with a little arrow pointing right on top. So now you can see both of my arrows are pointing to the 12, but you can easily see my hour hand and my minute hand. 9.30, we're back down to the six for 30, half past, and then halfway past the nine. So my hour hand's going to be in between that nine and 10. If I follow it through, yep, he's good. Three o'clock, back to the 12 for o'clock, and my hour hand points to the three. And then 5.30, we're back down to six for 30, half past. And then it's gonna be half past five. So it has to be in between this five and six. So my little hour hand is gonna be pointing. If I follow him through, yep, he's good. He can't touch the six yet. All right, now on your exit ticket page, I do want you to do this one by yourself to make sure that you can do it without my help. 